I'm grateful to the committee for selecting my abstract. It's a great honor, and actually it's also very humbling to me to be sharing uh, the results of my research together with such brilliant scientists and clinicians and uh, be a part of this outstanding scientific experience. So I'm gonna talk to you about uh, a very specific mutation that's been found in acute myeloid leukemia and uh, why we think that this mutation is important. So we know that acute myeloid leukemia is uh, a very deadly disease and unfortunately, apart from some exceptional subtypes, the prognosis hasn't really changed <laughs> over the last 30 years. And also the treatment has stayed uh, relatively the same. It's standard chemotherapy, the so-called three plus seven regimen. And also the majority of patients actually respond to the chemotherapy pretty well initially. Unfortunately, most of them will later relapse because they uh, develop, uh, and this relapse disease is gonna be refractory to the chemotherapy. And it's believed that oftentimes it happens because there is a small subset of cells, of uh, leukemic cells, that are resistant to the initial chemotherapy, and they'll just stay in the body and persist there, and they would later give rise to this relapse disease. And so uh, those cells are called the so-called minimal residual disease, and they're believed to be uh, chemoresistance, uh, chemoresistant preleukemic stem cells. And we wanted to investigate whether there was a link between specific mutations that are found in uh, leukemia, uh, presence of the minimal residual disease, and uh, the mechanisms, the specific mechanisms of chemoresistance. So uh, we performed a very large analysis on a, a large clinical trial that has been um, done in the United States. It's called an ECOG, an Eastern Collaborative Oncology Group uh, E1900 clinical trial that's actually been reported a couple years ago. And we, uh, it, it involves 398 uh, AML patients. And we correlated the presence of minimal residual disease that we can detect by some very sensitive methods, by flow cytometry, where we take the blood out and, uh, and bone marrow out and by using specific very sensitive method to try to detect the disease. Uh, so we tried to correlate the presence of minimal residual disease and specific mutations that were found. Um, and uh, uh, later, we also wanted to see how these mutations that we found, uh, what was the mechanism of driving chemoresistant disease by using a mouse model. So moving fully into the basic science department and trying to see, to model what's going on in patients. And uh, uh, some of the results included that there was only one particular mutation that robustly correlated with the presence of minimal residual disease. And it was a mutation in a gene called DNMT3A. And it's not just any mutation in this gene. There is one very specific mutation that just affects one point uh, in this gene. And, and the presence of this mutation predicted both the presence of minimal residual disease and the presence of chemotherapy and adverse outcome. And so we took this mutation and put it into a mouse to see what's gonna happen. And uh, actually, just this mutation alone did not induce any disease in a mouse. However, when we combine it with some other uh, mutations that are very commonly present in disease, we can see that the leukemia that we got in a mouse was much worse, was much, was much more aggressive than the other, uh, other mutations alone. And actually, this, the presence of this mutation uh, is very interesting because last year, uh, a couple of studies also identified this particular mutation in uh, a large number of elderly people without any hematologic malignancies. But the, those people had so-called clonal hematopoiesis. It means that their blood in, in the entire body was produced pretty much by one stem cell that had this mutation. So it means that actually this particular mutation, maybe it doesn't cause leukemia, but it makes a really good stem cells. Really good stem cells that can outcompete uh, all the other stem cells in the body. And uh, one of the reasons why these uh, stem cells are so good, because they're actually resistant to stresses, and chemotherapy is also a stress, so they're, uh, uh, so they're resistant to that stress. And so when we try to look at the mechanism on the molecular level, uh, what we found, so when we treat cells with chemotherapy, usually we induce DNA damage. It means that there are breaks in the DNA. 
And in order to repair these brakes, the cell first needs to uh, get access to, the, to those brakes. And DNA is not, just, is, is not just sitting in the cell. It's actually spooled on uh, little proteins. They're called histones. And so the cells need to unspool the DNA first to get access to the brake. Um, and there are specific proteins that are involved in that. So what we found that DNMT3A actually uh, inhibits this unspooling process. And it means that because this process is inhibited, the breaks persist because the cell just doesn't know that they're there and is unable to repair them. And as a result, um, the cell is unable to, to repair these breaks and uh, the cells accumulate mutations. And also, those cells are damaged, but they do not, um, they are not eliminated by apoptosis as we heard earlier today from Dr. Roberts. So the cells are not being told to drop dead. So they're, they're pretty bad, but they still survive because they don't know that they need to, to drop dead. And so we believe that this is the mechanism how the damaged cells uh, survive uh, low-dose chemotherapy. And this is actually also the mechanism how they accumulate additional mutations to accelerate the leukemogenesis uh, uh, later on. So the conclusions from our studies uh, is that uh, we believe that we found a novel mechanism of uh, resistance to chemotherapy. And uh, um, uh, this is a novel mechanism that leads to chemo resistance and to persistence of this minimal residual disease that later uh, gives rise to the relapse. And so this very specific mechanism, this defect in DNA damage repair, means that actually maybe we can find a way to target this specific vulnerability uh, because uh, in the same clinical trial earlier on, it was known that these patients who were resistant to standard dose chemotherapy, they actually benefited from the increased dose of chemotherapy, while all the other patients without this mutation did not see any benefit. They also see, uh, saw an increased toxicity, but there was no benefit. So now we actually have a mechanistic basis to know why increased dose of chemotherapy in this particular group of patients may be good. And we can also find uh, uh, novel ways how to target that. Maybe we can try to target other, um, other components of the DNA damage machinery. So if we just hit the cells uh, harder, you know, they won't be able to survive. Or another avenue is actually combining chemotherapy with ABT199, again, as we uh, heard from uh, Dr. Roberts, uh, also to promote apoptosis of those cells, so actually force them to drop dead. And so we're now, uh, we're now investigating these multiple therapeutic avenues.